So this right here has been my project for the past month and a half, two months. Uh, this is a almost entirely TTL CPU. Uses around 34 logic gates, or I'm sorry, uses about 34 chips, and the entire CPU is made up almost entirely of just logic gates. Some facts about the computer. It has an 8-bit address bus and data bus, so it's fully 8-bit which means it is limited to 256 bytes of RAM. It has a Von Neumann architecture, so the program storage and the RAM are in the same address space. It has a complex instruction set, which is horizontally microcoded. So the control signals here are one-to-one -one with the uh, logic systems here. There is no intermediate decoding. It has up to 256 possible opcodes, which are defined in this uh, instruction register up here, and the counter over here is what is used in combination with the instruction register to step through the microcode for any given opcode. The other graphs here, this right here is the program counter. This is the memory address register, or MAR. This is the data bus, and these three lights here are the uh, zero flag, the carry flag, and the uh, PC counter load so there are some design decisions that I took when designing this. Um, I wanted the control logic to be as simple as possible. So essentially no intermediate uh, intermediate decoding. So that means that unfortunately there has, a, has to be a lot of control codes available in this case, 24. But I wanted to keep the amount of ROM down to a minimum. So that's where I'm using the Arduino. Uh, the Arduino right now is performing about five functions. Um, it controls all of the input output here. So these eight switches along with these two switches for the mode and the uh, buttons here are all being read by these parallel chip registers into the Arduino. The Arduino is running a state machine, which is currently, which is constantly updating the state of the computer, uh, both the address or the index, both the uh, instruction register, the counter for the instruction register and the inputs from the switches and buttons. The Arduino is what also uh, activates the control lines. So every cycle, or every half cycle rather, the Arduino is reading the sum of the instruction register and the counter and referencing its own internal memory to feed these three shift registers, which are the control lines. The Arduino is also controlling the clock. This is mostly to keep the machine in sync with the Arduino so it's able to keep up with the logic decoding or the decoding for the uh, control signals and the serial. The computer does have a serial interface, but I've designed it in a way that it can be entirely operated from these uh, switches up here. So you saw before I was able to change one of the data switches in this mode, which changed the uh, clock speed. So this is the uh, second fastest clock speed. It's the first fastest or the highest clock speed. This is the second to lowest and the lowest clock speed. You can also disable the clock and single step, or I should say half step, with that button there. You can also pre uh, lift the switch up, which takes the computer out of run mode and puts it into program mode. So from here, you can alter things on the data bus, such as deposit values into the data bus and increment to the next uh, address in RAM. Uh, you can also do things like clear. So there's a button here to just reset the entire address space. Again, that's controlled by the Arduino. Uh, in this case, the Arduino, the Arduino does not have DMA. It has access to the bus, but it does not, does not have access to the program counter. So what it's doing is it's uh, cycling the control codes over here to set the state of the logic to be whatever it needs to be to do a certain operation. So to load programs or to insert values into the data, into the, into the, into the RAM, uh, it's going to be using the control codes for that. So you might see it flash quickly when I press deposit here. It was a little, too, a little bit too quick to see, but, but it'll be really be noticeable when I uh, load a program. So this is able to pull from the Arduino's EEPROM, uh, which is reprogram, pr reprogrammable on the fly. And it's divided up. There's in the Arduino and the Atmega, at Atmega 328p, there is one kilobyte of EEPROM. 
and that's divided up into four. So there are four separate possible program slots, which contain an entire image for the RAM. So what I can do is load program, for example, um, I'll just load program zero. So I have all the switches set to zero. I can hit load. You can see that it flashed pretty quickly. And what it did is it, it wrote the entire contents of that particular area of EEPROM into the RAM. So now when I uh, select program mode off, goes back to, pro to run mode, and I'll set the uh, second highest clock speed and then do clock enable. And it will start running this uh, Hello World program. So even though you can use the front panel controls to enter in programs and control the entire computer, it's much more convenient to do it through a serial terminal. So I'll go ahead and open, uh, plug in the computer to my laptop here. And the computer will reset. And then you'll see here, this is the output from the computer. Uh, the, all the lines with hash marks are from the Arduino and everything below this run mode line is from the CPU itself. And it's running at a lower clock speed um, just to like, emphasize the operations that are happening on the board. Um, but I can switch it to its fastest clock speed, which is this here. This program goes and prints out the string hello world, um, while also keeping track of the number of runs that it's gone through or number of loops. Prints out all the uh, printable ASCII characters and then goes through the Fibonacci sequence in hexadecimal. So programming all this uh, through the keypad would be pretty annoying. So what I have, what I've developed instead is an assembler that I wrote in Python. So this right here is the assembler with all the opcodes and the sopcode matrix. And it's a very basic assembler, uh, right around 200 lines of code or so. And allows me to type in programs. So this one here, this is the source code for the Hello World program that's running right now. And it's written all in assembly language. And all the opcodes here are defined in that lookup table. And it will automatically convert them to the opcodes and do the proper uh, formatting and alignment and all that stuff it needs to do. And from there I can compile it or assemble it rather. So what I'll do is I'll switch the computer out of program mode into run mode, or I'm sorry, in, out of run mode into program mode. So it stops the clock. And now you can see over here, the Arduino has taken control again, and it's now saying program control, or it's in program mode. So I can use this as just a normal monitor. So I can type in R, for example, to clear the RAM. I can examine memory addresses, um, but I more useful, it's, uh, the more useful thing about this is the ability to write programs using the terminal. So I can do a zero, set the address to zero. So you set the program counter clear. And I can do write one, like one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's written, so the program counter is six and it's written uh, six bytes into the RAM. So I can uh, go back to address zero and just click next or hit next a few times. And you can see that the data bus is showing the values that I entered in over there. So what I can do is I'll compile the Hello World Pro or assemble the Hello World program and upload it again. So I'll do main hello world.asm. And from there I can use another script, which is called upload and then do hello world.bin. And what this will do is it will latch itself onto the serial terminal and send in all the bytes of this program as if we were sitting here typing them in. Okay, so it's written all, I think it's, yeah, 238 bytes. So that means there's 18 bytes left in RAM. So yeah, programming this for this thing is a little bit, a little bit tricky, uh, but now I can switch it out of uh, program mode into run mode and it will run this program. It's the same program that's in the EEPROM, so the output is exactly the same. But there are also other programs I can run. For example, I switch it back into uh, program mode and one of the programs in here 
is this input test file. So this program right here um, will take in string input and output it back to the back to, back to the screen, uh, which sounds pretty simple. But when you're doing it on an assembly language for an architecture that you designed, it gets more complicated. So I'll go ahead and upload this program. Um, first, I'll assemble it first. So, yeah, pretty small program, only 98, 98 bytes. Uh, the reason that it's able to be so small is that this is, I guess, it's like I said, a, a complex instruction set. So uh, it has to be because of how small the RAM is. Uh, so I'll go ahead and upload input.bin. And switch it back to run mode. It's going to print out this uh, string here. So now it is entered into a loop where it is waiting for serial input from the user. So I'll go ahead and type in, and it's running slow right now. So I'll switch it back to its fastest speed just so you can, it, it's a, a bit easier to watch. Uh, so I'll hit enter and it just prints out the string to be entered in. Although there is some kind of issue with this because it's not supposed to be doing this. So it's supposed to be halting the CPU, but instead it is repeatedly sending out uh, exclamation points. So um, I'm not sure why that's happening. This right here, uh, it's getting stuck in this particular area for some reason. I'm guessing probably the halt instruction is being weird again. But one other issue with this is that there is no software stack and there is no hardware stack. In fact, there is no stack at all and it's not even really possible to do a stack in its current architecture without uh, it being a kind of a mess. And that's because this computer only has three registers and only one of them can be used for general purposes. So the registers are the accumulator for the ALU, there's the instruction register, and there's the MAR. That's it. Those are the registers. <laughs> so um, the re MAR is write only. So you can write to it, but you can't read from it. And the instruction register, obviously you can't use that because by changing this register, you will change the operation entirely. So the ALU is really the only uh, storage space available uh, in hardware apart from the RAM. And that was the idea is that the, the RAM would take the place of other registers. So anyway, this is uh, pretty much it for this development build. Um, still working on fixing out some of the problems with this and sort of expanding on it a little bit. Um, in the next revision, I'd like it to be 16-bit and support a hardware stack. Um, the only real major problem with that is, you know, the more I develop the 16-bit version, the more I feel like I'm just recreating the 6502. And I already have a 6502 that runs very well now, um, which I've made videos on before, but that was several years ago at this point. So it's, the computer has come a long way since then. Um, it's a lot more capable, but this was just sort of a hobby project I wanted to do over the winter break.